Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Weather permitting, outdoor services of Holy Communion are held each Sunday at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. in the parking lot. Please make reservations for those services at holytrinitylynchburg.org or through the church office. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude. We continue with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of steadfast love, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have wandered from your ways. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to forgive those who have sinned against us. Have mercy on us, create in us new hearts, and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger 
and abounding in steadfast love. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, 
so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The planet Mars has been in the news quite a bit in recent weeks with the successful mid-February landing of the NASA rover Perseverance on the red planet's surface. Nicknamed Percy, the rover has transmitted fascinating video of its entry, descent, and landing, pictures of the planet's surface, and the sounds of the Martian breeze. Incredible accomplishments after making a seven-month journey of over 300 million miles. This winter's news from Mars brings to mind a story that was making the rounds on the internet several years ago about the NASA rover Curiosity finding a message from God on the red planet. According to the article, the rover found two giant stone tablets deep inside a cavern. One of the tablets featured the text of the Ten Commandments, while the other displayed the text of John 3.16, written in 12 languages, including English. Not surprisingly, there were those in the, I saw it on the internet, so it must be true crowd, who thought the article was legitimate. NASA actually responded to debunk the story, stating very clearly that it was not true. However, given that John 3.16 has appeared on roadside signs, on shopping bags, on fast food drink cups, on race cars and monster trucks, on posters and t-shirts at sports events, even the eye black of a college football player, perhaps for some to think that it had also made its way to a cave on Mars is not too far out there after all. 
John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. We know the verse so well. It's perhaps the most well-known verse in all the scriptures. It's called the gospel in miniature. Even the gospel in a nutshell, as Martin Luther phrased it. This verse is so powerful, yet so misunderstood. It's important for us to remember that our reading today from the gospel according to John is an excerpt from a longer passage telling the story of a dialogue between Jesus of Nazareth and Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a Jewish leader and Pharisee who comes to Jesus by night under cover of darkness for a conversation that proves to be transformational as the Jesus story evolves. We see here the powerful imagery of light and darkness as the gospel writer portrays Jesus calling Nicodemus and the world to live in God's good, truth-loving light rather than in the shame and isolation of darkness. Unfortunately, there are those who take and distort the words of John 3.16 and use them to make God's love for humanity conditional, twisting Christianity into a religion of requirements and rewards. The reward that is dangled before people like a carrot before a horse is eternal life at some future date and place. The requirement is the intellectual acceptance of a precise set of beliefs supplemented by prescribed behaviors. Believe in these things, live in this way, and you will be saved, they say. Obviously, the corollary applies as well. Fail to believe the right things and refuse to live a wholly obedient life as defined by those making the requirements, and you will suffer the consequences in a much hotter climate. There are aspects of a reward and requirement system that are reasonable and satisfying from a self-centered human perspective. Truth be told, we have an instinctual tendency to divide people into the good and the bad, into our tribe and other tribes, into real Christians and the fake or non-Christians, into the saved and the damned. We as humans like to feel that we are succeeding, that, that we are more God-pleasing or more faithful than those people. Otherwise, what's the point of it all? The message of the gospel is very different, very radical, very countercultural. Both Scripture and the wisdom of the Reformation tell us that salvation is not something we earn or deserve but rather an unmerited gift from God. The gospel according to John makes very clear that God loves the divinely created world, not just us, not just Christians, not just all people, but the whole of creation, the cosmos. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is about much more than our personal individual salvation. The self-giving love of God we see on the cross is unleashed to work in the world. 
God beloves the world so much to enter into it through Jesus the Christ and give us life eternal here and now. John 3.16 is is not about eternal fire insurance to keep people out of hell some future day. It's about the transformed, abundant life God gives to us now. The good news of the gospel is that God loves us in spite of ourselves God loves us in ways we can't comprehend. God loves us in reckless, extravagant, wondrous, spendthrift ways. In spite of our unworthiness and unresponsiveness and inability to understand it, the most silly, most foolish, and most totally incomprehensible thing about this is that God keeps on giving us the gifts of divine grace. God in Christ Jesus gives us rebirth and new life as God's Spirit works through water and the Word and through our Lord's holy meal to claim us, to mark us with the cross of Christ forever, transforming us into children of God and and stirring up within us God's passion for a more just and peaceful and compassionate world. John 3.16, this familiar verse speaks of God's persevering love for the whole vast perplexing universe. It is both personal and cosmic from earth to Mars and beyond. On the cross, our Lord takes us deeper into the heart of God than anything else ever has. Something happened on that cross 2,000 years ago that redefines how we see our lives and the forgiveness and the healing that can happen in a world as broken as ours. Because God so loves the world, Jesus the Christ sustains us and empowers us as we are sent forth to live out our Lord's justice and hope in the world, caring actively for the broken, the hungry, the sick, and the suffering in his holy name. Amen. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people in need. O God, you sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of your church throughout the world. Empower us to share the good news of your unmerited love in word and deed through service in your name. Lord, in your mercy. 
continue your creation of this good earth and inspire our careful stewardship of all that you have made. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures and bless farmers as they prepare for the coming growing season. Lord, in your mercy, you sustained your people of old in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought or other extreme weather. Help us bring the peace of your presence to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks that by your grace we have been saved. Fill us to overflowing with that grace that we show your mercy to others. Help us nourish any in our midst who are hungry for your life-giving presence. Give us patience and courage when the way of our spiritual journey seems long. Lord, in your mercy, we praise you for all the saints who have lived and died in Christ and followed in his way of self-giving sacrificial love. At the end, bring us with them into life in your presence and the fullness of your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our service now begins, marked with the cross of Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today we light a candle in memory of August Meidling Jr., who died recently. We give thanks for his life and his witness as we keep his family in our prayers.